the one main difference between Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise that actually might make me switch to being a Royal Caribbean cruiser. guys welcome back to van life mama so in this video i thought i would talk about my first experience on a royal caribbean cruise and how it compared to the carnival cruises that i've gone on and what my thoughts are on royal caribbean so on december 6th we went on our first royal caribbean cruise on the freedom of the seas it was a four night cruise to the bahamas we had a port day in nassau and coco Cay, and these are just some of my thoughts of cruising with royal caribbean for the first time there is one huge difference between royal caribbean and carnival cruise that this is one main reason that i may start going on more royal caribbean ships than carnival ships and i'll share that with you guys at the end of the video but for now let's start with embarkation the embarkation process was very easy <laughs> except for the stress of having to get the covid test so as a canadian it's not as easy to get a covid test 48 hours before embarkation as it may be for somebody who lives in the united states especially if you're driving so we did run into a problem about trying to secure a test so what I did is I went ahead and booked four appointments for the cruise port testing option and I was just going to pay the $400 that would have cost for us to go get tested at the cruise port because I just couldn't secure a test before then. But luckily we were staying at a hotel in Palm Beach the night before the cruise and I just happened to be checking the CVS website and I saw that the CVS about 10 minutes down the road from our hotel happened to have four appointments available in the morning for us to go get a rapid antigen test done. This was an amazing uh, stroke of luck that we were able to go to CVS, get our four tests done for free. It was a little stressful getting the results. Pretty much as soon as we left the CVS, about 10 minutes down the road, my husband and I had our results. But because our children are minor, um, they do not just email minor results to the uh, registrant's email. You actually have to call the company that does the test and then they will uh, send you proof of the COVID test results. So I was uh, sitting at the cruise port in the cruise terminal parking lot, parking garage, calling <laughs> the company, getting them to send me my children's COVID results, praying that they would be negative. And luckily for us, they were all negative. So being able to go for those tests at CVS the morning of and having the results, that saved us $400 American, which in Canadian is quite a bit of money. So I was really grateful that we uh, were able to do that. That was probably the most stressful part about the cruising was trying to secure those um, pre-cruise testing requirements. So I was happy to get that done. Now, once we had those, the embarkation was incredibly easy. It must have been because of reduced capacity. There was nobody in the cruise terminal. It all went very quickly. We dropped off our luggage with the porters. And then when we went in, there was pretty much no line. First thing we did is we had to show them our uh, proof of vaccinations and our negative COVID tests. We actually had to show a couple of people that uh, along the way, but there it was a very fast process. It probably took maybe 10 minutes from dropping our luggage off to being able to get on the ship. It was very quick and it was very organized. That was very well done, Royal Caribbean. Much more organized than the other cruise, carnival cruises I've been on. So that was one point for Royal Caribbean there. And then finally stepping on the cruise ship, the Freedom of the Seas, this ship was beautiful. I mean, if this is what Royal Caribbean ships are like, I that's fantastic. Like this sh cruise ship was just gorgeous. I much prefer the freedom of the seas over the carnival ships that i have been on i think royal royal ships are better as far as the decor and the layout and the amenities the only thing that royal caribbean is missing that we love on carnival ships is guys burgers we were really missing guys burgers royal caribbean didn't have a fast casual free burger option 
They did have Johnny Rockets. We did go there for lunch. It is an upcharge. It was a very good burger, but we do miss having that free burger option. So I wish Royal Caribbean had something similar to guys on their ships. Maybe on other ships they do, but on Freedom of the Seas they didn't. Their taco place though, I much prefer the taco place on the Freedom of the Seas, the Blue Iguana on Carnival. I, I prefer the food there. With I found it tasted better. I liked that they had uh, the nacho option. And I, I just preferred it over, over Blue Iguana. Now, once we got on the ship, it was a couple hours before our room was ready. So we just went to Windjammer to get something to eat. And the, let's, I just have to say, Royal Caribbean's food is better than Carnival's food. Um, I, I found the buffet was better. The variety of food in the buffet was better. Now, we never went to the MDR on the Royal Caribbean ship. We're not really MDR type people. We don't really like to eat in the MDR. So I can't say what the food in the MDR was like. But if the, the food in the buffet was better than a carnival ship, I'm going to say the food in the MDR is probably better than on a carnival ship. I did notice that the Lido deck on the Royal Caribbean ship, though, is not as open as the carnival ship. I mean, I did like the Royal Caribbean Lido deck because the pool was huge. Huge. The amount of hot tubs on the Royal Caribbean ship was crazy. There was always room in the hot tub. Uh, on the other carnival ships that I've gone on, there's not as many hot tubs and the hot tubs are smaller. So trying to find one that is impactful to people was always interesting. But on this Royal Caribbean ship, there was no problem finding a place in a hot tub. I did miss the openness of the Lido deck. I missed the uh, deck parties that Carnival has. I noticed Royal didn't really have like a sailway party or anything like that, but I don't know if that's because of the pandemic that they just weren't having a big deck party or is that just not something that Royal does? Maybe other people who cruise with Royal can let me know, but I did miss that sailway party. And on Royal Caribbean, I noticed that the cruise director was not as involved in the daily um, activities and entertainment as the cruise directors are on Carnival. Like on Carnival, I know exactly who my cruise director was. I knew what he looked like. Uh, I saw him pretty much first thing getting on the ship at the deck party. I never even saw our cruise director until our third night when I went to the Once Upon a Time show. I had no idea who he was. <laughs> so that's the difference between Royal Caribbean and Carnival is how involved the cruise director is. Um, obviously Carnival has more of a like party feel, but I actually liked the vibe on Royal Caribbean. It just, it was chill. There were parties where you wanted there to be parties, but there was lots of opportunities to just relax. And I, I liked that kind of vibe. And Royal Caribbean may seem like a minor thing, but the music that Royal Caribbean pipes into the Windjammer and pretty much everywhere else, we loved it. Because we're used to Carnival, where Carnival is usually like, oh, Pitbull or some other like dance music. Where, But Royal Caribbean was piping in like classic 80s rock and they would do like country and there was a variety and from a whole bunch of different generations. And we loved the music that Royal Caribbean played on the decks like way to go caribbean royal caribbean with picking your music you did very good as far as entertainment goes i mean similar between both ships uh we enjoyed all the trivia games just like we do on carnival we enjoyed the karaoke um and the live music uh one thing I wouldn't say that the Royal Caribbean show was better than carnival's sh shows they're very similar in, in that it's mainly just like singing and dancing the sets and the costumes on the Royal Caribbean ship for Once Upon a Time were amazing. So I, I would say that they're both kind of tied on the entertainment aspect. Uh, we didn't get to go to an ice show uh, because with the pandemic, you do have to make a reservation to go to a show. And we had a reservation for one night, but then we just decided to do something else. So we never really got to catch the ice show which I kind of regret. But next time we're on a Royal Caribbean ship, we'll go catch a nice show. The sports playmaker sports bar on Royal Caribbean was way better than any sports bar I've ever been to on a carnival ship, which I appreciated. It was a lot bigger. Um, there were a lot more TVs and there were a lot more things for my family to do while I was watching the football game as opposed to on a carnival ship, which was awesome. I loved that. No, I never thought I would like the idea of the way that the promenade was was um, set up on a Royal Caribbean ship. I always thought it would feel like I was in a shopping mall or something as opposed to being on a cruise ship. But I actually really like the setup of the Royal Promenade. On Carnival, it just feels like you're walking down like a zigzaggy hall, but the Royal Promenade 
it's so because it's so high and so grand and open and I actually really did like the feel of the promenade and the way it was set up with the shops and the bars and the restaurants. Now the huge draw for us for Royal Caribbean was actually going to Coco Cay and it was absolutely worth it. Coco Cay, if you haven't gone on a cruise to Coco Cay, you need to do it. It is such a beautiful island. The way Royal Caribbean has set this up with the water park and the party pool and just the all the chairs by the ocean the beach is gorgeous beautiful sand beach awesome snorkeling awesome food options and drink options the water park was beautiful coco Cay has to be one of my absolute favorite places to go and i will 100 percent be going back there we really did like all the activities that um, royal caribbean offered too as far as like the rock wall and the wave runner it was just there was just so much to do on the ship now, like I said, the one main difference between Royal Caribbean and Carnival Cruise that actually might make me switch to being a Royal Caribbean cruiser as opposed to a Carnival Cruiser is their drink package. So on Carnival Cruise ships, their deluxe drink package or their alcohol package, anybody in the room who's over the age of 21 needs to get the alcohol package, whether or not they drink alcohol, which as you guys know, I do not drink alcohol. <laughs> so for forcing me to pay such a large amount for a drink package that I won't use was one of my biggest pet peeves of Carnival. So when I called Royal Caribbean to see if they offered any alternatives to non-drinkers on the cruise ship, I was pleasantly surprised to see that they did. So my husband was able to get their deluxe drink package for um, alcoholic drinks and I was able to get their refreshment package. Now their refreshment package allowed me to get uh, mocktails, smoothies, milkshakes, premier coffee drinks, iced coffee drinks, stuff like that, specialty coffee drinks at a fraction of the cost of the drink package. This saved us hundreds of dollars on the ship and is something I very much appreciate that Royal Caribbean offers. I think Carnival needs to wake up and offer something similar on their ships. Right now they pretty much only have two packages. You either get the alcohol package or you get the, um, the soda package, the pop package, and that's it. Carnival needs to realize that there are non-drinkers who do not need a full drink package and I really think that's something that Carnival needs to implement similar to what Royal Caribbean's done. So overall what did I think of my Royal Caribbean experience? It was fantastic. It was a fun time. The crew was amazing. The customer service was amazing. Embarkation and debarkation were incredibly easy. Would I go on a Royal Caribbean ship again? Yes I would. In fact when we were on our ship when we were on the Freedom of the Seas. We booked another cruise with Royal Caribbean that we will be going to in 2023. And I'm really excited to share with you guys that destination because it's gonna be pretty awesome. It's something that's been on our bucket list for a long time and we're really excited to see it. But for now, videos will start going back to van life videos. We are taking off down south to Arizona to Quartzsite and then going to explore some of the Southern United States and then after a few months, we will be back on a cruise ship, this time going back to Carnival. So in the meantime, please feel free to like this video. Every time you like the video or leave a comment, it helps the channel, it moves us up in the algorithm. And I just like talking to you guys. If you guys want to talk to me about van travel, if you want to talk to me about cruise travel, if you want to talk to me about anything, I'd love to hear from you guys. So please leave a comment message me on Instagram, message me on TikTok. I'd love to hear from you. But in the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next adventure and have a good one. Bye. Dream, journey, adventure.